Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. In today's episode, we recently got back from Brandon, Manitoba, where the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference took place. Now, amidst the energy of the conference, we seized the opportunity to engage with local elected leaders hailing from across the province of Manitoba. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episode, its significance remains undiminished. Today, we are delving into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in Manitoba. So we will be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring the town of Lynn Lake Councillor Eugene Shin. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Eugene, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciated. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. If you've listened to the show, you know my very first question, and that is, where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from? Well, I've been in Lynn Lake for the last 13 years. I uh, moved actually from uh, Surrey, B.C., so it was quite uh, an environmental change. Uh, Just a tad. <laughs> an economic change, a social change, uh, and over the last 13 years being in Lynn Lake, uh, it's kind of the first time I've felt that I was having the, the, the real Canadian experience. And by that, I mean, being born in Montreal, having lived all throughout Canada, uh, and spending the last, um, before the 13, moving up the, the last 10 years in, in, in Surrey, Vancouver, um, you know, we're, we're stuck in such an urban environment. So I, I move up to Lynn Lake and, and, you know, I meet people that are trapping, fishing, hunting, living off the land, living off, uh, you know, with with the entire back, their backyard is, is all nature, uh, and I thought, what an experience! Uh, and you get to meet people that have history in the community. They're, they're second generation, third generation, people that you know had were first born in Lynn Lake, uh, whose uh, whose uh, you know uh, son became a really good friend of mine, but. So you start to know, understand that the Canadian experience is, is, is real. Uh, there's a massive connection to it, and, and the people is what makes the community. Uh, so I felt that, you know, I really wanted to give back and become part of it. I thought that I had a lot of background in, in different environments that, well, that could contribute to the community. So How did that contribution turn into elected office? Um, you know, we're a very small town of, of, of less than 600 people, right? So um, I thought that I could be a really strong voice in terms of the economic sense, being a small business owner in Lynn Lake. Um, so I wanted to give another perspective to Lynn Lakers and, and really think about the future of Lynn Lake. So, okay, so there's a few questions, as you know, I always ask on the show, and I want to talk about the first one that I find important to myself, and that is apathy. Apathy, apathy, apathy. 20 years ago, you'd find 20 people in council chambers. Today, it's hard-pressed to even find one person attending a regular council that's meeting right. that's not paid to be there <laughs> or elected to be there. Exactly. In Lynn Lake, do you find that people are engaged enough in the issues that are affecting the municipality? Uh, definitely not. I mean, there's always room for growth. There's always uh, room for more information. Uh, and, and it's our job and, our, and, and, our, and we're in a fortunate position to to relay that message and to engage our residents and our community members and our business members so no I mean there's always we're always gonna have that opportunity I think there's a tremendous amount of growth 
uh, room for growth, and uh, hopefully we can we can provide that for our community. So, members. so how do you see how do you find your role as counselor in bridging that gap, bridging that gap of getting people involved and getting people to understand the role of the municipality in a time when people are so tuned out because they're focused on on themselves because there is so many issues that are f affecting Canadians from a coast to coast to coast. Yeah, so Lynn Lake's very unique. We're such a small town that um, we don't have cell service. Uh, we just got high-speed internet through Starlink and, and I'm, I'm not getting paid by Elon <laughs> for this. Uh, so we interact on a person-to-person -person basis. Yeah. Uh, having run the, the Lynn Inn, uh, I s probably come across the most people in town on an everyday basis. So I can talk about it for hours and hours, and and every every customer uh, who's a regular, it's it's I don't see I rarely see people that I don't know, and if they do, then I'm asking, what brings you to town? What are you doing here? How, what can we do for you? So you know the human and human interaction is, is crucial for it, and it's been extremely successful in in sending the message out in terms of the municipal level. So when they do approach you, when they do talk to you, and or if when you approach them. Do they understand the jurisdictional role? Do they understand that prov provincial issues are healthcare, education, municipal issues are wastewater, garbage, infrastructure, or is there a blurring of that jurisdictional line in your community that people, when they do ask you questions, don't truly understand where the municipality's role plays or the province role plays and the federal government role? No, that's exactly it. They they're not aware of it, and it's and it's and it's my job, and I, and hopefully I've been successful at it at, and at informing our people that you know this is what we can offer this is what we can do to push the agenda further at a provincial level or at a federal level you know and it comes down to some, something as simple as go out and vote you know do you know who's even running for an election so you know that type of messaging uh is crucial for us uh, and, and hopefully we're doing a good job at, at in making sure that our people understand what's happening. So I want to flip to the segment too and I want to talk about Lynn Lake as a whole and as I always do on this show just to make sure people are aware this is a conversation between the councillor and myself not a motion of council not a direction of council not even a policy of council he has one vote on that council but this is his opinion and his opinion alone. So in your opinion what is the biggest challenge or challenges facing Lynn Lake today? We're at the end of the road of Provincial Road 391. Life is a, we renamed it Life is a Highway after Tom Cochran. <laughs> Had a big, big showdown for, with him. Um, we're often forgotten, right? Being at the end of the road, our, our services are, are lacking. We don't have cell service. Right? We just got high speed internet. So trying to get the messaging all the way to Winnipeg, to the to this legislative center. You know, to our premier, and we've been. That's why we've been very proactive in coming out to these uh, municipal meetings uh, and events, so that we can voice our concerns. We can have a sit down with everybody here and, and let them know that don't forget about us. Right, we're here, and, and that we're going to make a big splash here in the in, in the coming years as we open up a, a new gold mine uh, back up in Lynn Lake. So can I ask the political question? Of course. Do you feel be, do you feel like you're being heard? And I say you as the royal you again as council, but you as a councillor as well, do you feel like you're being heard at events like this or even in Winnipeg or Ottawa? Yeah, the AMM does a tremendous job in putting the right people together and in providing us opportunities to voice our opinions. Uh, just even today, um, President Cam Blight came to us and, and talked to us in terms of connecting us with uh, different ministers. Uh, yesterday at the opening ceremony, uh, we had uh, the mayor of uh, Brandon, uh, Jeff Fawcett. Mayor Jeff Fawcett gave us a big shout out there. Uh, we've, we're, you know, we've at the fall convention, we had a tremendous session with uh, the minister, Jamie Moses, with Mr. Ian Bushy, uh, with the RCMP and so on. So yeah, it, this is definitely working. Uh, these events are crucial to us being heard and, and we're just happy that we can be here to relay the information in terms of our, our community and what we can do. Okay, we got a five minute warning here because we're recording this in Brandon, Manitoba at the 2024 Spring Convention. So I've gonna ask the flip side because you are dealing with a lot of challenges on a, on a, a community wide scale. But when you do get 
ask questions about what's going on or challenges that their residents are facing, you have to balance those individual issues with the community issues. How do you see yourself being able to do that to make sure people feel like their issues are being addressed, but also that their issues are being are not becoming issues anymore? <laughs> well, the first thing is you have to listen. And a lot of people miss, really, I think, miss that step. Really take in that information and, and, and make sure that information doesn't get lost. Mm. So ensuring that at every step that information gets followed through uh, and there's feedback and, and, and being such a small town, I don't get to listen to something and not hear about it the next day because <laughs> I'm seeing that person day after day after day, right? So, and they're, trust me, they make sure I don't forget about the issue. So there's a tremendous amount of accountability on our part and, and we really try to make sure that at every step that we stay connected and that we can, that information or that message goes somewhere uh, so that the decisions being made at the top level, you know, hopefully, you know, our voices are heard. How, how hard is it to be, because you are a small community in the sense of population size, but how hard is it to be honest and transparent with people and sometimes have to tell them, unfortunately, we can't do that because you don't want to piss people off, upset people, but you want to be truthful with them enough to say, I, I hear you, I understand you have an issue, but in the realm of what we have going on in the community, we're just unable to address that issue today. No, that's, that, it's, that happens all the time. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, however may, you may look at it, most of the time their issues are my issues and my issues are their issues. So it's something that we share on an everyday level. So we can always, I'm here to make sure that I don't give up on those things because they're, whatever they're impacted by, I'm impacted by the same way every single day. So I think at that level, you know, Lynn Lake is really fortunate because everybody works together. We all share the same, you know, highs and lows together. So if we work together and, and stay persistent, you know, we think that we can make a difference and, and change can happen. So I've, I've been telling people on the show over the last uh, two, three days since I've been here at AMM, this August I'm doing a big tour of Manitoba and I'm coming to Lynn Lake now because you you were sitting in that chair. I'm making a trip up the highway, life is a highway, yeah. to the end of the highway to go visit Lynn Lake. What should I come and see? Well, come in the summertime. We are the fishing capital of Manitoba. So, you know, bring lots of uh, mosquito repellent. Um, <laughs> And uh, we'll make sure we've got cold beers and, and a fishing rod ready to go for you. So come anytime. You're 100% welcome in, in Lynn Lake, and we can't wait to see you soon. Awesome. So my final question is, what makes Lynn Lake such a unique place to live, to work, and to raise a family? You know, it's with the new mine opening, it's going to be an, an absolute uh, booming town. There's going to be endless economic activity that's going to happen. Uh, but the best part about it, is, and, and, and the reason why I still consider Lynn Lake my home now, is that everybody knows each other. Uh, a vehicle drives by, you wave at them. If, if a dog goes missing, the whole town's looking for it. You know, if, if you don't, if you need, if you have a question or if you need any type of information, anybody, you know, your neighbor knows exactly what's happening. It, it's a beautiful town, and, and it's a, it's going to be a thriving community, and we can't uh, we can't wait for everyone to come and, and enjoy Lynn Lake just as much as I do. Eugene, thank you so much. Thank you. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. If today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged but your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.